Happy New Year and greetings from Babson College. I'm Larry Ward, Vice President and Dean of Campus Life. I hope that you, your families and friends remain healthy and well during the holiday and winter break. It's a pleasure to be with you today to provide both an update and an overview of our spring 2021 return to campus plan. I'm grateful as always to be joined by my colleagues, Caitlin Capozzi, Dean of Students, and Ryan Travia, Associate Vice President for Student Success, who will be sharing their expertise and perspectives as well. I'm mindful that we have many first year students who will be starting at Babson for the first time this month. Welcome. We are very excited for you and look forward to being part of your Babson experience. Our goal for this forum is to outline several of the important considerations and priorities that will lead to a successful repopulation of campus and also govern campus operations throughout the course of the spring semester. Throughout our discussion, we'll highlight what's new, what's changed from the fall, and what remains some of the same expectations and responsibilities. For those of you that were enrolled during the fall semester, whether in person or virtually, you know that we were quite successful in maintaining operations, in no small part because of the extraordinary cooperation and commitment of our student body. I'm grateful for your dedication and very optimistic for a similar effort this semester. Nevertheless, managing college operations and maintaining an in-person experience during the COVID pandemic continues to be a very challenging and dynamic undertaking. We remain committed and guided by two principal objectives, safeguarding the health and well-being of our campus community and providing academic continuity and delivering excellence in the learning experience for our students. I think it's super important as well to understand that every member of our community shares in the responsibility to keep us safe and together. We've worked hard as an institution and invested heavily in risk mitigation efforts that include de-densification of campus buildings and spaces, including classrooms and residences, enhanced cleaning and disinfecting protocol, designating one-way ingress and egress pathways and buildings, adding directional and guidance signage throughout campus, enhancing airflow and building ventilation systems, and ensuring that we have safe operations in campus eateries and the rec center. Similarly, our faculty have made extraordinary efforts to adapt teaching strategies and shape the learning experience to accommodate learning in person, hybrid, and 100% virtual. Nevertheless, as students, you play an outsized role in writing our success story by doing five simple yet remarkably effective things. One, consistently wearing a face covering for your own and others' safety. Two, practicing social distance and ensuring that others maintain proper distance, especially when indoors and particularly when behind closed doors. Three, getting regularly tested for COVID each week. Four, monitoring and reporting symptoms daily. And five, washing or sanitizing your hands frequently. So understand Babson's leadership team is confident in both our return to campus plan and the ability of our community to be agile and to persevere as conditions evolve over the next few months. So let me turn it over to Caitlin, who will outline some of the specifics related to pre-arrival, arrival, and ongoing guidelines and protocols. Caitlin? Thank you, Dean Ward. Since students departed campus in November, we have been working diligently on our January return to campus. All students who plan to participate in the in-person experience this spring are expected to quarantine for 14 days prior to arrival on campus or the Boston area. This strategy was very effective for us in the fall and allowed us to begin the year with less than three positive cases. We understand that you may have necessary errands to manage during this 14-day period, including flights and hotel stays during your travel to campus. 
please ensure that you wear a mask and physical distance while addressing essential needs to maintain the integrity of the 14 day pre arrival quarantine expectation. All residential students are required to complete the attestation of compliance through self service on the hub within the pre arrival quarantine period. If you are unable to complete the pre arrival quarantine, the college will arrange for quarantine on campus pending two Babson administered COVID-19 tests with negative results. This is typically a five to seven day period. I recommend that if you have not done so already, that students complete the attestation as soon as they are able to allow us to make arrangements for a smooth arrival to campus. Earlier this week, students received an email from Dean Ward introducing a new set of virtual tools to improve the student experience as it relates to testing and symptoms monitoring compliance. It is important that all students complete the location survey, declaring your planned spring modality by January 11th. Additionally, all students, whether in person or remote, must complete the required onboarding course through Canvas by January 19th if you did not complete this for the fall 2020 semester. This course will launch January 8th and will prepare you for academic success across teaching modalities, familiarize you with campus resources, and provide health and safety guidance to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Students who completed the onboarding in the fall are encouraged to review the content for important campus updates. We are quickly approaching the January 12th deadline to, port to purchase course materials for in-store pickup prior to the first day of classes. If you have not done so already, please visit the Campus Store website and order your course materials to ensure that you are prepared for your classes. The spring residential move-in process will follow similar protocols to fall move-in. To provide a de-densified process, students have been assigned a move-in date and time. These arrival dates and times can be changed if your travel requires it by emailing the request to the housing operations team. All residents must complete their first Babson administered COVID-19 test immediately upon their arrival to campus and may not enter their assigned residence hall until doing so. Any student arriving outside of the testing center hours of operation may report to their residence hall and are expected to quarantine in place until the first available testing site the following day. Please schedule your tests in advance. Students who require move-in assistance may have one move-in helper join them on move-in day. For safety purposes, we ask that you limit additional family and friends on campus during this time. But if you require additional support from family and friends, please note that these visitors are permitted on campus in public areas, but only one designated person will be allowed to enter your assigned residence hall. Anyone accompanying you to campus must complete the visitor registration form located on our website. After moving into your residence hall, Students are expected to quarantine in their assigned room until receiving their first negative COVID-19 test result, typically 24 hours. Students may leave to collect to-go meals from the dining facilities, use assigned household bathrooms, retrieve move-in essentials from the mailroom, and to collect any necessary course materials only. We understand that many students will be eager to reunite with your friends or meet people on your hall but please do your part by waiting the one day for a negative test result before doing so, as this is critically important for our success as we start our in-person semester. As Dean Ward mentioned, we continue to prioritize the health and safety of our community by maintaining clear policies and guidelines, which all community members are responsible for complying. Masks remain a requirement in public settings on Babson's campus and throughout Massachusetts at all times. As students manage essential errands and exercise throughout the Wellesley and Greater Boston area, please remain diligent with your facial coverings. Community members are also expected to maintain six feet of physical distance at all times. These two mitigation strategies remain our strongest defense against an outbreak of COVID-19 on Babson campus. As we begin the spring semester and manage testing compliance for our community, residence hall access will be restricted to residential students assigned to their building only. It is critically important that students review and follow all expectations for health and safety for, to encourage health and safety for all. Students who blatantly disregard these expectations are likely to be removed from the in-person experience. 
Early next week, I will be sending an email to all students with updated COVID-19 health and safety guidelines that outline expectations and policies, including gathering sizes. These guidelines are regularly evaluated based on guidance from the Massachusetts governor and recommendations from our consulting industrial hygienists. As we review the number of positive cases and compliance with testing and symptoms monitoring, our hope is to create opportunities for more in-person events and programming as we did in the fall. With the approaching winter weather, students who are here in the fall will notice that the tents in the Park Manor Quad and Hollister parking lots have been removed. To ensure that we have adequate gathering space for students, we have identified locations across campus for group study, club and org programs, private study, dining, and socializing. These include expanded seating in Trim, the Market and Park Manor West, Knight Auditorium, the Reynolds Campus Center, and Trim 201202, among others. We will be sharing a full list of available and bookable spaces via email prior to the start of classes. I highly encourage students and families to regularly check your Babson email and review the Babson Together website for the most up-to-date information regarding the spring semester. We are eager to welcome you back to campus in a few short weeks. And I'll now turn things over to Ryan Travia, our Associate Vice President for Student Success. Ryan. Thanks very much, Caitlin. As Dean Capozzi shared, it is critically important that students comply with weekly testing and daily symptoms monitoring. To improve that experience for our students, we recently unveiled a new mobile-friendly system called Acuity for scheduling your COVID tests and completing daily symptoms monitoring, along with several other features. As a reminder, all students who plan to be on campus will need to have two negative COVID tests administered by Babson before in-person classes begin. These tests should be scheduled three to five days apart. Following these initial return to campus tests, students will be on a testing cadence two times a week until February 15th, with a minimum of 48 hours between tests. Appointments at the COVID testing center are required, and we strongly encourage you to pick a day and stick to it. The new Acuity scheduling system actually allows you to schedule recurring appointments, which is one of the new features from what we had in place this fall. You will complete your daily symptoms reporting on the same site, and if you are symptomatic, you will be instructed to stay in your room, refrain from attending in-person classes, meetings, practice, etc., and to call health services for a consultation, at which point you would likely be invited to come to the clinic for a COVID test. In addition, we have launched a new travel form accounting for both out-of-state and out-of-country travel, or if you plan to be off-campus, for five or more days. While we strongly discourage travel from campus and the Boston area, we understand that urgent matters arise and we can safely welcome you back to the in-person experience. Upon completion of the form, an individualized assessment will be conducted by health services with follow-up instructions provided regarding requirements upon your return to campus. If you were previously diagnosed with COVID from an off-campus facility, be sure to share that medical documentation with health services so that we can make appropriate accommodations for you regarding the college's testing protocols. And again, as previously mentioned by Dean Capozzi, the location survey, including your learning modality, must be completed by January 11th. Students will begin receiving their daily campus pass when their second negative Babson COVID-19 test is confirmed. For the duration of the semester, this daily campus pass will be emailed daily to students who are in full compliance with the testing requirements and who report no symptoms on their daily symptoms report. Please keep the badge on your mobile phone as confirmation that you are in daily compliance. Now, in the event that a student tests positive for COVID, is symptomatic and or has been identified as a close contact of someone who has tested positive for COVID, they will enter our quarantine isolation or QI protocol. You will first hear from one of our clinicians and health services and following an interview, a determination will be made regarding whether or not you need to enter isolation or quarantine space and if you will be able to complete QI on or off campus. Regardless of your location, 
I personally assign every student in QI a dedicated case manager who will serve as a resource and the primary point of contact for you and for your family throughout the duration of your time in quarantine or isolation. We manage communication with your faculty and deliver three meals a day, including lunch, dinner, and a continental breakfast. A clinician from health services will call you daily to check in about your health status. Wellness and prevention services and counseling and psychological services will also continue to offer individual support for students, as well as a weekly drop in support groups for students in QI. Next, I'd like to take just a few moments to talk about a few of the departments within the student success portfolio. Health services, which I've mentioned a few times already, provides free confidential health care for all full time enrolled students. To schedule an appointment with health services, including symptomatic COVID testing, please call 781-239-6363. The health service is also responsible for managing the college's immunization compliance program. Earlier this fall, the governor of Massachusetts issued a new mandate requiring all full-time students under the age of 30 to receive the flu vaccine by December 31st. We offered several clinics this fall, and hopefully by now, all of you have received your flu vaccine. If you received the vaccine off campus, be sure to upload your medical documentation to the health portal so that we can update your medical records accordingly and ensure that you are in compliance with this new mandate. This is especially important this winter, given how the symptoms associated with COVID often mimic what we see with colds and flus. If for whatever reason, you were unable to get a flu shot before that December 31st, 2020 deadline. You are welcome to call health services to see if they have any vaccines left in stock and potentially schedule an appointment. These are stressful times that we're living in, managing through a pandemic, social distancing, a divisive political climate, and escalating tensions related to racial injustices among all of the normal day-to-day -day stressors that college students encounter but support is available. Counseling and psychological services, or CAPS for short, provides free, confidential, short-term, episodic individual therapy and consultation for a wide range of concerns related to mental health and emotional well-being. CAPS is currently conducting teletherapy sessions for all full-time enrolled students. We are able to provide this service to most students residing in the U.S. If you're interested in meeting virtually with a CAPS clinician, simply email counseling services at babson.edu, or you may call the office at 781-239-6200. There are no specific limits to the number of sessions we provide as we tailor services to the individual needs of each student. And finally, student advising and success. All students are assigned a student success advisor who provides academic and personal advising throughout the duration of their Babson journeys. For the newest members of our community, again, welcome. You will be assigned an advisor later this week, and that advisor will be in touch with you via email before the semester begins. To reach a member of the Student Advising and Success team, you can email studentadvising at babson.edu or call 781-239-4075. For those of you who already have logged into Advisor Link, you know how to access all members of your student success team. And you are able to schedule appointments directly with your advisor through that system. As a reminder, course registration reopened this week. So if you wish to make changes to your spring class schedules, you can do so at any time before the end of Ad Drop, which ends on January 26th at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our office will have ad drop walk-in hours via WebEx from January 19th through 25th, and all students will be hearing from us closer to the start of the semester with confirmation of those hours. I'd like to go back to Dean Ward now for some summary remarks. Thanks, Ryan, and thank you, Caitlin, uh, to both of you for uh, really laying out uh, expectations. Um, I'm just super impressed with the work of, of your units. And I think we are both well prepared to welcome back uh, our students. 
you know, the, the balance between efforts to safeguard our community and also maintaining connection to each other as a community is vital uh, to campus life. We know that being together, even when it looks and feels a little different, matters. It matters for your well being academically, personally, and emotionally. As Dean Capozzi said, we're going to have student programming and engagement through student clubs and organizations, our centers and institutes, through BAPS and Arts, within the BAPS and Recreation and Athletic Center, the uh, BAPS and Varsity Athletics, BAPS and Dining, Residence Education. And for us to be successful as a college community, we have to do more than just want to be successful. As with anything that matters, wanting something to happen is a necessary but insufficient condition for success. We will be successful with individual and collective effort and discipline, some sacrifices and selflessness. Throughout the fall semester, we demonstrated what's possible and learned a tremendous amount about what works and what does not. We also did not hesitate to pivot and make appropriate adjustments along the way. And this semester, we'll do the same thing. Because flexibility, patience, and resiliency are central to our formula for success. So whether you are starting at Babson for the first time or returning to campus for your final semester, we're excited for your arrival on campus. And we look forward to tackling this challenge and this opportunity together. Thank you for joining us. Please stay safe and be well.